good morning children our today's topic is electricity electricity is one of the very important concept in our ncs physics syllabus electricity is the primal force of our nature you are already familiar with the need of electricity in our daily life without electricity we can't imagine our days that's why we need to know about what is this electricity in our physics the word electricity means it's a study of charges the word electricity means it's a study of charged particles it's a study of charged particles this study has been done in the two branches in the first case we study about electric charges which are at rest in the first case we are going to study about the electric charges which are at rest in the second case we are going to study about the charges which are in motion electricity is studied usually in the two branches in the first case we study about the charges which are at rest in the second case we study about the charges which are in motion the branch of the physics which deals with the study of charges at rest is called as a static electricity is called as static electricity also called as the electrostatics and the another branch of the physics which deals with the study of electric charges which are in motion that is known as current electricity that is known as current electricity here the word static the word static means it's a state in which the object or the particle is not moving means it can say it's a rest position and after this we just try to understand these two branches by differentiating them the first difference and the very important difference is that static electricity and the electrostatics deals with the charges which are at rest and the second branch that is current electricity that deals with the charges which are in motion after that the static electricity is usually built up on the surface of the objects usually static electricity builds up on the surface of the objects but current electricity not like that this electricity is due to the motion of electrons in the conductor not on the due to motion of conductor due to motion of electrons or charged particles in the conductor and after that this static electricity usually develops on both the insulators as well as conductors static electricity can be developed on both conductors as well as insulators so very important thing which you have to keep in mind but current electricity this is possible only in case of the conductors this is developed only in conductors and the one more difference is that whenever there is a static electricity it doesn't develop magnetic field around it whenever static electricity is developed or builds up on the surface around that magnetic field is not created but current electricity not like that whenever there is a flow of electrons in that particle around that particle or around that object if it is a wire around that wire magnetic field is created 
Wherever there is an electric field, there must be a magnetic field. Or we can say current electricity usually produces magnetic field around it. But static electricity never does this. Only in case of current electricity, magnetic field is produced. These are the differences by which we can clearly understand static electricity. Next we see about the static electricity, few things, so we can understand it in a better way. Before 19th century, the only electricity that was used by the people was static electricity. This static electricity is a form of potential energy, we can say. PE means potential energy. It's a form of potential energy. This is usually created by rubbing the objects. How this is produced means by rubbing, means by friction it is produced. Is usually produced by rubbing the objects. It's nothing but by creating the friction between the objects. Because of rubbing, what happens? There is an imbalance of charges. Because of rubbing, there is an imbalance of charges. So I can say static electricity is nothing but imbalance of the charges. Static electricity is nothing but imbalance of the charges. For example, it's a very common activity which you all have done in your childhood. Whenever you rub a plastic scale on your dry heads and bring it here a piece of paper, what would happen? Pieces of paper are attracted by the plastic scale. Why this happens? Before rubbing, without rubbing the scale on your heads, when you bring it here the pieces of paper, in that case, we won't observe the attraction between the scale and the pieces of paper. But when we rub the scale on our hairs, dry hairs, and bring it near the pieces of paper, we observe there is an attraction between the pieces of paper and the scale. This is because the scale gets charged because of rubbing. The scale gets charged means what? The scale gets charged means in between these two objects, one of the object is losing the electrons and another one is gaining the electrons. Means we are creating the imbalance of the charges. The one which one is losing the electrons is having weakly bound system of electrons. That's why it loses the electrons. Another one which is gaining the electrons that is having vacancies in the outermost shells. Because of that it is gaining the electrons. One which one will lose the electrons that becomes more negative, positively charged body. One will lose the electron, becomes more positively charged body. And the another one, which one is receiving the electrons or collecting the electrons, that becomes more negatively charged body. This means we are creating imbalance between the scale and the pieces of paper. But before rubbing, both the things were neutral. Neutral means total charge is zero. Before rubbing, total charge of both the objects, zero. When we rub, what happens? There is a gaining of the electrons or losing of the electrons. After that, again when you absorb the total charge, again the total charge remains zero. Means the electrons which were displaced during this process, those remain static again. The electrons which are collected by the another object are shared by the another one. These electrons which are moving from scale to piece of paper, those electrons remain static once they displace from scale to paper. That should be kept in the mind. That's why its name is a static electricity. Because after displacement, those particles again remain static. After displacement of the charged particles from the scale to paper, those will remain again static. That's why it is a static electricity. About the static electricity, we will study in detail in the next year classes, in the higher classes. Now, in our 10th standard syllabus, we want to focus on a current electricity because this is in our syllabus. Next is current electricity.
to understand this current electricity, first we need to know what is this current. You are familiar with the meaning of this current. Current means it's a flow. Flow of what? It's a flow of fluids. Current means flow of fluids. Water current, air current, people current, children current. You might have seen in the water bodies how the water flows in a river, in a waterfalls. Water flows from higher level to lower level. This flow of water from high level to low level is called as a water current. Water current means flow of water. It's a flow of water. Similarly, air current. In our surrounding, air is moving. But how it is moving? It always moves from high pressure level to low pressure level. That is air current. That is air current. Flow of air. You might have seen in a Sharanvashwashwa temple how the people stand in the queue and move towards the main door to get a darshan of the God. In one direction they move towards the God. That is a people current. In our school also, after assembly bell, children move in a line towards assembly hall. That is a children current. Similarly, when charged particles, when charged particles start to move, if I take a piece of conductor like this, when charged particles start to move in a definite direction, in a piece of metal, this flow of charged particles, usually electrons in case of a metal, that is called as electric current. So, electric current is the flow of charged particles in one definite direction. That is very important. Now they are looking as if they are in a definite direction, but usually within that area randomly they will be moving. When all together we consider total, all are moving in the one definite direction. That's why electric current is the flow of charged particles in one definite direction. So to understand this electric current, we need to know what are these charged particles. We need to know that current is a flow of charged particles in definite direction. Then what are these charged particles? What is the meaning of charge then? That we want to know now. Electric charge means what? Because current means a flow of charges. Then what is this charge? which is called as a charge. The interesting thing is that till now, no one has yet to define the actual meaning of the electric charge. Even the scientists are still in the confusion and under the research about the electric charge. But we are trying to understand the electric charges, defining them by observing their properties. What we are understanding is just by their properties. Actually, what is the charge? No answer for that. But we can understand it, we can know it just by the basic properties. What are those properties then? We know that charges are usually positive charge and a negative charge. Here is a one positive charge. If I bring a one more positive charge near to the first one, what would happen? These charges move away from each other. Why they move away? No answer for this question. Why they are moving away? No answer. They are moving away means we can conclude that something forces there in it which is making them to move. That much we can conclude. Understanding what I am saying? Why they are moving away? No answer for that. But we can say that something is there inside them which is making them to move away. Something energy is there, force is there. Similarly, if I bring one negative charge near with the another negative charge. In this case, what would happen? Again, they move away from each other. Now, what we do? One positive and one negative charge we take. Then what happens? Now, they are moving towards each other. In this case, distance between them is increasing. Here, distance between them decreases. They start to move towards each other. This one we call as a repulsion. 
And here what is happening, we call it as a attraction. Why this we can conclude that when both are the same type of charges, they repel. When both are opposite charge, they attract. What is charge? Still we don't know. These are the properties of the charge. So we can say that electric charge is the basic property of the elementary charge particles. Are only elementary particles we can say. Electric charge is the basic property of the elementary particles because of which they are possessing electric force. This repulsion and attraction is nothing but electric force now. Electrostatic force you can say. That's why electric charge is the fundamental property of the particles by virtue of which they are possessing electric force or electrostatic force. This is known as an electric charge. Is it clear? These electric charges usually we see one positive charge, one negative charge. Just to differentiate them, they have given positive and negative. Positive and negative is not giving a particular special meaning here. Just to differentiate them, the scientist has given one for a positive sign and another one he has given as a negative. And both are having equal magnitude of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 18 coulomb. This one also 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 18. To differentiate them, for one charge you have given plus sign, for another one you have given as a minus sign. Positive charge we say as plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 18 coulombs of a charge and negative one minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 18. And how to represent this physical quantity? Electric charge. This is represented by a symbol Q. Q is the symbol used to represent this electric charge and its SI unit is coulomb. These things you have to remember. After this, we see what are the basic properties of the electric charge. Starting some properties which are very important, usually asked in the MCQs. The first property is that electric charge is a scalar quantity. What is the meaning of scalar quantity here? It's not having direction it means. It's having only magnitude. So very important. That's why electric current is also scalar quantity. It's not a vector. We usually say that it is moving in a definite direction, but it is not having a direction. It's a scalar because electric charge is also scalar. We can't perform a vector sum by using the vector law in case of the electric current. That's why it's a scalar. And next property, it's additive in nature. It's additive. In nature, usually they ask you to find the sum of charge on a given body. How to understand this one? It's a one body. On this, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Qn. Here is a one body. On this body, at different parts of the body, some charges are there acting on it. Q1 to Q1. Then, what is the total charge of the body? We know that charges are like two types. Positive charge, and negative charge. And we also know that charge is a scalar quantity. Then, what is the total charge on this? The total charge on this is a Q equals to? It's an algebraic sum of individual charges acting on this different parts of the body. Then it becomes Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 till how many are the that many? Qn. That's why we say electric charge is Additive in nature means you want to find out the total charge acting on the body. Mean take an algebraic sum of the individual charges which are acting on different parts of the body. That is the meaning of additive in nature. After this, one more property. It is quantized. Means we know that. Whenever the body gets charged, either it loses the electrons or gains the electrons. The body gets charged either by losing or gaining electrons, we say. But it never loses or gains fraction of electrons. Fraction of electrons means 1.2 electrons, 1.3, 2.5. Like that, it never loses electrons. 
either it loses two electrons, three electrons, four electrons like that. Means the number of electrons either it is losing or gaining is a discrete value. Means it is not continuous. It's an integral multiple. That's why we say q equals to plus or minus m e. This n is always 1, 2, 3 like that. It's not 1.1, 2.2, 3.3 like that fraction value. Always it is discrete, but not continuous. Means it's an integral multiple. This E is a 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. This one formula I have to remember. You had in your formula charts. Electric charge is a quantum. While solving the numericals, this will help you. After this, one more property, fourth one. It's a conserved quantity. Means conserved quantity means in any physical process. In any physical process, the charge get transferred from one system to another, but it can neither be created nor be destroyed. For example, when we rub, you just take a silk cloth and glass rod. Glass rod. Before rubbing, we are not rubbing this both together. Before rubbing, both are in a neutral condition. Neutral condition is total charge. Total charge zero. Now what we do? We rub this silk cloth and the glass rod together. Glass rod we rub on a silk cloth. Then what would happen? Glass rod becomes positively charged because it loses the electrons and the silk cloth collects the electrons and it becomes negatively charged. Here one object is losing the electrons and another has gained the electrons. After that, when you observe the total charge, after this process, again it remains zero. This means what? Electrons get transferred from one object to another. But neither they can be created nor be destroyed. The net total again remains the same. That's why it is conserved quantity. And uh, one more property is that, so very well known, light charges, light charges repel, and unlike charges, and unlike charges always attract. These are the basic properties of the electric charge. Is it clear? Next we move to the electric current. After knowing about this electric charge, now it becomes easy for us to understand the electric charge. In understanding the topic of electricity, we need to know many physical quantities, basic concepts. Then only we can understand the concept of electricity. Next we try to understand electric current. To understand this one, we take a one example here. It's a very common example usually we consider to understand the electricity. So body A, so body B. <coughs> What are you observing here? There are two bodies here. Body A and body B mounted on an insulator. Body A is having some charge particles and B is also having some charge particles. But when you observe carefully, it is clear that A is an electron deficient region. B is having electron, more number of electrons, means it's an electron rich region. Now there is no connection between A and B. So there is no movement of electrons from A to B or B to A. If with the help of metallic wire we connect these two, then what would happen? 
Electrons start to move from where to where? Whether they move from A to B or B to A? They move from B to A. They move from B to A. Because it's an electron rich reason, electron deficient reason. Always these electrons move from electron rich reason to electron deficient reason till both the potentials become equal. Means no number of electrons should become equal in both the reason. Till that they move from B to A. Once the potential becomes equal, movement will stop. This means that to make a flow of electrons continuous, you have to maintain a difference in potential. If potentials are equal, there is no movement of electrons. If you want to keep on moving the electrons continuously, then you have to maintain the difference in potential. Here, as there is a difference in potential when we connect B and A with the help of metallic wire, electrons start to move from B to A. This movement of electrons, I can say as a flow of electrons, this movement of electrons is nothing but flow of electrons in definite direction. What is the definite direction? B to A is the definite direction. This movement of electrons or flow of electrons in definite direction. This is known as a current, electric current. This is known as electric current. Now we want to measure this electric current mathematically. What is the magnitude? How to measure? Want to measure the electric current. The magnitude of the electric current. How to measure? It's a amount of electric charges. This cross section of a wire we consider. Amount of electric charges, how many are flowing across this at a certain point, particular point. The amount of electric charges which are moving across a particular point, across a cross section of this wire in one second. In one second. That is known as a electric current. If here we don't know, we can't count how many number of charge particles are there. So we say Q number of, Q amount of charge is flowing. Q amount of charge is flowing. Time also we don't know. It is flowing for a time T second. Then I can write Q by T. Because the amount of the electric current or the magnitude of the electric current is measured as amount of charge particle which are flowing across a given cross section in one second. When Q is unknown and T is unknown, Q number of charges, so Q here. With that, time is T seconds, so T. That's why the mathematical formula for the electric current is Q by T, electric charge for a given time period. If one coulomb of charge is flowing across this given cross section of the wire in one second, in one second, then one coulomb of charge is flowing in one second means what will be the current? Current will become one ampere. One ampere means one coulomb per second. Like this also you can write. Yes, it's taken as a numerator. One coulomb per second is nothing but one ampere. This is asked usually in the MCQs. One ampere equals to options. One will be present this one. One coulomb means when one coulomb of charge flows through a given cross section of a conductor in one second, that is called as one ampere. Is it clear? And the device which is used to measure this current, that is called as ammeter. And it is always connected in series with the circuit. Is it clear? Now we solve few questions based on the same concept. First question. Calculate Calculate 
number of electrons calculate number of electrons calculate number of electrons constituting one coulomb of charge How to calculate number of electrons they asked? Charge is given. Electric charge is one coulomb. Charge on one electron is how much we know? Charge on one electron. How much it is? 1.6 into 10 to the power. Then number of electrons becomes 1 divided by 1.6 into 10 to the power. Simplify, you will get the number of electrons. That is 6.25 into 10 to the power. These many electrons in only one coulomb of charge. Come to next question. Which unit is second question? Which unit is used to measure current? It's a very simple question. Here are the four options. Take here the right answer. Third question. If current through if current through a lamp is 5 amperes if current through a lamp is 5 amperes what charge what charge passes in 10 seconds we use that current formula R equals to U by T. Using that, get the answer. Options here 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 
Use the formula I equals to Q bar T. Want to find out Q? Next change the formula. Q by T becomes I, then Q becomes I T. What are given here? Five amperes is given, and then ten seconds time is given. It's a fifty coulombs. Time should be always in a second only. This is the sub even. Fourth question now. Passing through a conductor P amount of electric charge passing through a conductor in ten minutes in ten minutes. Is three hundred coulombs. Then the current flowing is then the current flowing is options. Thirty amperes, three amperes, point five amperes, then five. How much? Point five. First, you convert that to time period T into seconds. Ten minutes is there. Ten minutes. Ten into sixty. Now we get time in a seconds as a six hundred seconds. Then C coulomb is given Q. Charge is given. Ask us to find current. I equals to Q bar T. Q is a three hundred and time is six hundred. Zero zero cancel. Three by six means one by two. One by two means a point five. As it is current, it will ampere. So 0.5 amperes is the right answer. Now the next question. Which statement in the following is correct? Which statement in the following is correct? First one. Ammeter is connected in series in a circuit and old meter. Is connected and old meter is connected in parallel. This is first statement. Second statement: 
the emitter has high resistance third statement a volt meter has low resistance these are the three statements out of these three statements which are correct you have to select by these options here a1 option 1 2 3 b1 1 2 c1 2 3 d1 Only one. Select right answer in this. Here options A, B, C, D. In this one option, emitter is always connected in series circuit and uh, in series in a circuit and voltmeter always in a parallel. Emitter is having high resistance and voltmeter is having low resistance. Yes. Whether these two statements are right should come or reverse. Emitter is having low resistance, voltmeter high resistance. That's why only this one statement, first one is correct. So the option B is correct. Next question, sixth one. One coulomb charge. One coulomb charge is equivalent to. charge is equivalent to charge contained in charge contained in option a 2.6 into 10 to the power 19 electrons Two point six five into ten to the power eighteen electrons. Six one. What is the charge contained in a one coulomb? Which is the right answer? It's a B one. This part you have to remember. Six twenty five. Your total marks are six hundred eighteen. Have a good day, means remember. The next question, seventh one. This is seventh one. The unit, the unit used for measuring 
potential difference. Want options? Without options, also you can say the answer. How it is measured? First option that will level. Remaining any four options you like. It's the very easiest question. Then the answer just we are recalling. Difference in potential is measured in terms of volt. Now we see few numericals on the same. How much work is done? How much work is done? In moving a charge, in moving a charge of two coulombs, in moving a charge of two coulombs, from a point, from a point, at one one eight volts, one one eight volts, to a point, to a point, at one two eight volts. What to do? Potential difference. You have to find out. PD. How much it is? Yes. What is formula? V equals to W by Q. Use this formula. For that, first you subtract this 128 and 118. And get that potential difference. First, we need to find V 128 minus 118. How much you get? 10 volts. Now it's very easy to solve this. V equals to W by Q. W we want to find out. W becomes V into Q. V is the 10 and Q is given. So, as it is work done, unit is choose. Eight one now, nine one. Today is solving very easy questions. Day by day, raise the level of difficulties. Next question, how much energy is given, how much energy is given how much energy is given to each coulomb how much energy is given to each coulomb of charge each coulomb of charge passing through passing through a 6 volt battery passing through a 6 volt battery Again, same formula, potential difference V equals to W by Q. Try to find out this. W we want to find out. So, W becomes V into Q. Then we want to do? 6 volt is there. 6 into 1. Each coulomb means 1 coulomb. Very simple twist questions. V is... Six. Q is each coulomb means one coulomb. So six is answer. Six J, six joules is the work done. 
energy whenever they ask how much energy is given, you have to find out the work done only. To do the work, energy is needed, no? That's why we find work done. Next question. Second one. The work done, the work done is measured, the work done is measured, the work done, sorry, in moving, the work done in moving, A unit charge, a unit charge across two points, across two points. In an electric circuit, in an electric circuit, He is mother of dash. Current potential difference. C one resistance. Work done in moving the unit charge across two points in an electric circuit is a measure of potential difference V. That's why the formula V equals to W by Q. Work done in bringing the unit point charge from one point to another. One more question here. So eleven one. The device used to measure potential difference. Ammeter, galvanometer, multimeter, what is answer? None of these centers. These are not used to measure the voltage. Potential difference, nothing but voltage. One more numerical year, so to work on. An electric circuit An electric bulb with it, an electric bulb draws a current of a current of point two five amperes. Point two five amperes. 
for 20 minutes. 0.25 amperes for 20 minutes. Calculate, calculate amount of electric charge. Calculate amount of electric charge. That flows through the circuit. Oral question it is very simple one. Just to recall our basics, we are solving some simple questions. Electric bulb draws a current of 0.25 amperes. Note down the current. For minutes. For minutes means how many minutes I should take? 20 minutes it is. In the question it is 20 minutes. T is 20 minutes means 20 into 60. 100 seconds. Now what to find out? Calculate amount of electric charge. Q we have to find out. Q equals to I by what is the formula for Q? Q equals to I into T. I equals to Q by T. I is there here? 0 0.25 and this 200. To make this calculation easy, we keep this one in a fraction form so it can cancel as this zeros. 25 into 12. 12 is a 60. 12 is a 24. 24 plus 6. It's correct. Huh? This is a 300 coulombs. Thank you children, we continue the remaining bits in the next class.